Okay, so now that we've got all that scene set up, we want to add in some HDRI lighting. Now, there's a lot of HDRI imaging images on the net. Um, what HDRI stands for is High Dynamic Range Images. And basically it's just a high contrast image to be easily put. So I'm going to be using one from Dan Meyer on DeviantArt. There's a link to that in the tutorial. And we can use this by going over to our world settings, changing the input from sky texture over to environment texture. So we're going to need to select our image. So let's go open and I will be opening up the number 2. I'm going to bump up the strength up to 2. Just to make it just a little bit a little bit brighter. Now what we need to do is drag this down. Let's split this into a node editor for our world settings. Now in between these I want to go shift A and I want to add in a converter RGB to black and white. Because we don't want to have you know the green trees showing through and stuff like that. We don't want any colour to affect the scene, we just want the brightness. We just want the reflections. Alright. Now we could brighten it up a little more than that, but in instead of doing that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in some some planes around the scene to brighten it up. And we'll do this by going Shift A, add mesh plane, and dragging it up, and we'll go, let's go. 90 around X Alright So let's move that across, scale it up a bit And I'm even going to rotate this around a little Alright, so that will add in just one plane. So we're going to give this one here a material. I'm going to go new material. I'm going to set this over to emission. I'm sure it's a uh, pure white. And that there will just provide a little bit of lighting for the same. Now we need to go over to the object panel and turn off ray visibility for the camera. Now that there just means that if we can see it in our camera, which we can't, but all right. Uh, if if we had those, then if we could see them, then they'd actually show up in the scene. We don't want that. So make sure you uncheck ray visibility for the camera, and that will work brilliantly. So what we need to do now is add in four of these and place these around the jewelry. All right. So as you can see, I now have four of these around the jewelry, which will just help to brighten it up. And I've also increased the strength up to 1.3 just to make it a little bit stronger. Alright, so now it comes to rendering the jewelry. So over in your render panel, if you've got a GPU, if you've got GPU rendering, make sure you get it set to GPU. And underneath the integrator, you can see I've got my preview set to 20, but the, which, is, which is what it renders in the viewport, but render, I want that set to 512 for this tutorial, but if you want to get a nice and smooth image, I would recommend getting 2048 samples. Now, having them at you know 2048 instead of 2000, that's kind of just a force of habit for computer nerds like me. Um, everything has to be multiples of two. Uh, personal preference, of course. If you're not a computer programmer, you can just set it to 500 or 2000, of course. All right. So let's save this. I want to save as, let's go stage 5. Go to our camera view. Always make sure you save before you render. Now I'm going to leave this at 50%, but you might want to put that at full resolution. I don't want to spend a while waiting for this, so 50% will work perfectly fine. Now just pressing F12 to render, or you can click the image up here. Now you notice it probably will take a little bit of time with your scenes when you're working with cycles. 
um, it'll come up here building BVH and that there to get to 100 percent if it does crash sometimes cycles crashes when you have too much in your scene for example if you left your chain at 12 um, at 12 points along your curves it might crash my I'm working I'm currently working on a laptop with 2.5 gigabytes of um, graphics RAM and that there will handle up to ooh, I think I can handle um, up to 16 million polygons just as a reference for you uh, but if you've got a more powerful graphics card of course you'll be able to handle more if, you've, if you're only working on just your CPU you can actually handle much more um, I've, I've worked with cycles on scenes up to I think I've done 35 million polygons working on just my CPU because cycles of course will just crash so I'm going to pause this for a second let this render and I will come back when it is done save you guys watching a very boring tutorial for watching the samples going up okay so as you can see this render is finished and it took about six minutes uh, which is quite a long time but that's all right um, what we need to do now is we need to go into color correcting the render so I'm going to split this window and we'll switch this over to the node editor we go to C nodes, we'll check use nodes and click backdrop and we'll add in a output viewer node join that up and that will give us our result in the background so what we want to do is we want to add in a color balance node Don't worry about the composite node, by the way, until the end. All right, and with this, we want to add in a little bit of a pinky mood. So we can drag these around, and you can see which one changes what by changing them down there. Uh, let's drag this one down. We don't want it to be too pink, by the way, just a bit of a touch. Yeah, something like that. It's a nice, nice pinky purple mood. And we're also going to add in a little bit more contrast. So let's go Shift A, add in RGB curves. And we'll put in a very subtle S bend. And when I say very subtle, I mean very subtle. And some of you probably won't notice at this, at this resolution. <laughs> But you can see if I connect to that one, it's a little bit lighter and it's a little bit more contrast. Fantastic. Alright, now for the advanced users, just a quick tip for you. If you come into the um, UV image editor where your render result is, connect up your composite node, so it appears over here, you can see we have this histogram. Now a lot of people just do this by feel, just looking at the image, but you can actually use histograms as well. Histograms basically just tell you where your where the range is. If you're if you don't know a lot about histograms, just look at it at here's where it starts, here's where it ends. So you might want to drag this one up over to there and this one here up over to there. And that will give us the best result. Alright, so with that said, let's go ahead and create a create a nice subtle vignette. So we're going to go ahead and add in a color, brightness and contrast, turn the brightness up to 100, and connect that over to there, to the image, and, there. and now you can see it's a pure white. It's the easiest way to make it pure white, um, otherwise the vignettes don't quite work quick, correctly. Now we're going to go ahead and add in a converter math node. Now we're going to change this to greater than, so where this is greater than zero. And there, and in between those, we need to add in a distort lens distortion. Distort of one. 
and there we go. So if you connect over to this one, see that looks fine. Greater than zero, that still works as well. They both actually look about the same. Um, yeah, force a habit to add in the, the math node there, but that works fine. Let's add in a filter blur node. Set this over to fast Gaussian. Uh, we're going to use relative. Make sure that's into the image, and we're going to set this over to 20 percent, which gives us a nice yeah, like that. So by using a color and mix, we can mix together this image with our vignette, set to multiply. And obviously that is way too much, so let's change this all the way down to perhaps a 0.5, or maybe even less than that actually. 0.3, here we go, we'll use a 0.3 for this. And that is our image. Now if you want to take this to the next level, um, just final final tip, you might want to take this into an image editor like Photoshop and add in a few sparkles. So I'm going to quickly go and cover that right now. So if I draw up, let's go image, save as image, and we'll save this as, let's go tutorial, PNG, save as image. Now you can use either Photoshop or GIMP, um, they'll bo basically they'll both work the same. Um, I'm going to use Photoshop for this, just for convenience sake. Um, but yeah, by all means, if you don't have Photoshop, grab a copy of GIMP and most of the tools are there for you to use as well. Let's just take a moment to start up. Alright, now let's open up our image. So we save this one here as tutorial. And you can do a bit more color correction here if you like, but what I'm basically going to be focusing on is creating our little sparkles. So let's grab our brush. Let's go. Don't have our X one there. We want to load in some brushes. Uh, I'm trying to remember which which had my X shaped brush. There we go. A sort of brushes. All right. So we've got these little crosses here. I just change the size a little. Come in a bit. And we can draw, I'll just draw it over here to show you, we can draw a little sparkle like that. And in our brush settings, let's go, is that, no, and brush. Over here, we want to rotate this by 45 degrees. And that will give us a nice plus shape. So we need to make this a little smaller now. Not quite that small. About that size. Mm. Might actually, some, just, just a tip, just to try this a different way. I might actually try, make this one here a bit bigger. Not that big. There we go. Maybe one size bigger. Alright, so that there is our image, or our sparkle. So we'll shrink this down a little. We'll move it over to somewhere we want it. And then all you do is just go Control J, move it over, or even Alt, Alt click and drag, and just move a couple around. You can even change the size up a bit. Just don't, just don't, um, don't rotate them. When you look at sparkles on something, they're all the same. They're all the same direction, all the same rotation. It's because it has to do with the reflections of the camera and so on and so forth. So they're all going to be exactly the same. Just some of them will be a bit smaller than others. Now you're not going to see it at this resolution. Make sure we render it out at high definition if you want to add sparkles. Um, but yeah, just for you to just for you to use. My original render, I believe, was about 18 megapixel. So.